It started with several years, headaches, neck tension, my hips hurt, occasional upset stomach. Man, I was stressed out. I'd be calling my mom telling her one thing gets added to my plate, I'm going to explode. I'm a freaking time bomb that's ticking. I worked in the hospital. I'm a physician assistant by training. I was working in the hospital clinic on the go, constantly on the go, working around the clock, weekdays, Weekends, not present with my family, sitting in an appointment, handing out prescriptions left and right. I'd catch myself saying, that's not going to work. That might take the edge off. This pill isn't going to do what they really want it to do. You see, I could see what was beyond the physical exam. I could see beyond this physical experience they were having. But I wasn't in the setting to address that. You see, we have a physical body. We have a mind, and we have a spirit. And they all need to be in alignment to be these fine tuned machines we're created to be. Right? Well, the disconnect is typically at that mind spirit connection. That doesn't get much attention. What do we do at that intersection of fear and faith? Nobody talks about that, at least not in the medical clinic. So now I felt like I was living these two separate worlds. Like one side, this is what I'm trained to do. This is what I'm told to do. This is the gold standard of care, yet I'm over here in this other world. I'm like, I have something. I know something that's going to make you feel better. And I couldn't speak. But that doesn't matter, right? Like, who cares? I'm making good money, I have a 401k, paid time off. $60,000 in student loans I still need to pay back. I have to do this. I mean, doesn't that make sense? <laughs> Logical sense. Because what am I going to do with this other stuff? <laughs> I had no idea. But I just decided to say, well, this is just how it is until I had a wake-up call in 2015 when I was sitting at my desk in the hospital clinic, charting away, and suddenly I can't type what I want to say. Like, that's odd. My medical assistant was getting a patient ready. I told him, I'm going to go lay down for a second. Let me know when you're done. So lay down. He comes in. He's like, all right, Melissa, how are you feeling? Your patient's ready. I wasn't talking. He comes up to me and he says, Melissa, are you okay? I'm like, I could nod my head no, and I could shake, I could shake my head no and nod my head yes. He's like, oh, I'm going to go get the doctor. So he leaves to go get the doctor, and I had remembered something 
similar happened to me about five years prior that I'd forgotten about. So I had an idea, oh, this is happening again. Just, just <laughs> at a whole new level. So, the, so my assistant comes back in. Okay, let's call your husband. Well, he hands me my phone, or tries to, and it has the key lock on it. I can't move my hands to unlock my phone. Doctor comes in, Melissa, what's, what's my name? His name started with a K, and I was like, K, K. Freaked everyone out, of course, right? Here I am in my white coat, I'm supposed to be knowing what I'm doing, this, stuff, this doesn't happen to me, I just take care of everyone else. But, you're it. So they take me to the ER. Because I had an idea of what was going on, because of something similar five years ago, I'm, I'm saying, I'm, I'm answering through yes or no questions, trying to tell them, don't give me the clot bust medicine for stroke patients. <laughs> I just need a little composite and Benadryl in my IV and get me out of here. Well, I got the IV. I got out of there. My voice came back. I could move again. I could walk again, but now what? That's my wake-up call. Now what? I wasn't listening. My body had been trying to give me signs for years. The headaches, the stomach aches, my back hurts, my neck tension, my hips hurt. I can't sleep. I'm in the go. Rush, rush, rush. I have no time. I wasn't listening. Isn't that normal? Like, wasn't I the norm? Like, isn't this normal? Like, do, can you guys relate? Like, normal? <laughs> well, I mean, I thought so at the time, but now I'm realizing, no. My body and your body speaks to us. So I went in to my office. I'm sitting back in my office. I'm, I'm looking around, I'm sitting in this chair, and I'm like, this isn't it. What if I couldn't walk again? What if I couldn't talk again? What if I couldn't move again? I guess I needed that to say, wake up. I had a strong will and was a driven woman. You couldn't stop me before, until now. In that moment, looking around, saying, this isn't it. I had to make a decision. I didn't know what I was going to do next. I didn't know how I could be me. I didn't know how I could have a PA hat on and, and do this other thing. <laughs> I didn't know at the time. I didn't know how to be me, how to put it all together. I couldn't help that I had this other thing that I could see behind the physical, this physical boundary of our body, behind what was on the physical exam, and really get to the root of the problem. Well, with that decision, I've just, which took a lot of courage to say yes to being me and not knowing how that was going to happen, it happened. But it happened through a complete space of surrender an acknowledgement that I didn't know how it was going to happen. I didn't know how to be me. I didn't know how to blend these two worlds together. Did I go through some fear of what are they going to think? Of course. Did I go through some fears of am I going to make enough money to pay off these student loans? Of course. But had to trust that this decision of just saying yes to me was going to lead me in the right direction, and it did. I'm here standing with you guys today. Thank you.